Not all software has a user interface, but for those that do, GUI testing is important. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. It's important that users have an optimal experience and that things work the way they should when users are clicking or tapping on screen components. Normally, GUI testing follows API testing. And the reason for this is because the GUI is normally based upon APIs. It makes calls to functions within the API, although a UI might only use some small subset of the available power behind an API. When it comes to mobile device applications, we have to think carefully about the benefit of software testing automation. One of the places that it really shines in is when we're testing for the many different platform versions out there. Imagine how much testing would be required even just for the Apple iOS platform for all the different devices and the versions of the Apple iOS. Now, at the same time, we might want to make sure that things like notification bubbles disappear off the screen correctly. Otherwise, it may confuse users. And this was a problem that you might have experienced if you've worked with iOS version 11 when it was initially released prior to any patches fixing this problem. Then there are different screen sizes. So how will the app be used? What's the demographic? Who is the audience? Will they be using a big screen, such as some kind of a media playing app that people might use on their home entertainment systems? Will they be using a desktop or a laptop screen, a tablet or a smartphone? We have to think very carefully about exactly how people plan to use the app. And that's why we might have to develop different variations of the app to accommodate these different screen sizes, as well as things like screen resolution. So even though a user might be using a desktop computer, what is their screen resolution set to? We have to account for the fact that that will vary and that our UI testing has to make sure that everything that needs to be on the screen is there. In these days, certainly when it comes to web applications, we'll have a mobile friendly view so that if a user is using their smartphone web browser to navigate the internet and they're viewing something, we might want to present an option to view it in a mobile friendly way so that data and text Whatever is required for that application appears on the screen carefully, because there's less screen real estate, of course, with a mobile smartphone than there would be on a desktop. We also want to make sure that all the relevant data is visible, either on a single screen, and sometimes what that means when we're testing our mobile-friendly aspects of our apps, that might mean that we ensure that mobile-friendly views only display text and not all the additional graphics or rarely used options that otherwise might be available on a larger screen. And we should also make sure that scrolling functionality works correctly if we can't fit everything on the screen at once, which is normally the case due to the limited screen size on smartphones. We also need to make sure that there is smooth user navigation between different screens and pages, that links work. We have to make sure that keystroke variations. Now, imagine beyond a web application, we've got a Windows desktop application with keyboard shortcuts. We need to make sure they work correctly in the appropriate context. Also, we have to make sure that field validation occurs when it should, according to the design specs, whether that's when leaving a field and tabbing to the next, or in the case of a web app, maybe validation only occurs when a user presses a submit button to send it to the backend web server. UI testing certainly also involves using other mechanisms like mice or tapping on a smart screen or using gestures. All of this stuff can lead to testing the user interface, including things like accepting license agreements, clicking in fields, validating fields, even displaying help text in the correct contexts. So the testing of this can be automated. We can automate things like keystrokes and mouse movements. Now, this can either be predetermined and programmed manually, or it could have been recorded and played back against that application. Now, when we play this back against the app to observe the results, we have to be aware that if the UI was redesigned in any way such that things are in different positions on the screen, depending on how we programmed our automated UI testing, th because things are in different places on the screen, it might not work if we're testing pressing a button that's at specific coordinates. So we have to think very carefully about UI components that are removed entirely or if their position is changed on the screen because we would have to, might have to reprogram our automated testing parameters to accommodate this. We also have to think about potential for having multiple instances of the same app or web page. And this is a classic example of a concurrency flaw that was prevalent years ago with shopping cart and checkout applications, where an initial web page for a shopping cart with items and the total price of what was in the cart was available, 
But if we opened a duplicate web page and started making changes, there were some ways in some vulnerable web apps whereby people could get things for free or at a discount when they really shouldn't have. So there are a lot of aspects then to graphical user interface testing. It's a lot more than simply ensuring that when we click a button, it does what it's supposed to do.